welcome to this month's release of Videotech. This session will be taking a look at the Premier and Monaco Vehicle Maintenance Monitor, Trip Computer, and Clock. We'll start out by explaining each component's theory of operation, then take you through their diagnostic functions. Dave will run through a couple of sample problems using the component's built-in diagnostic features, and we'll finish up with the service of these components. And throughout this session, you may notice us referring to the Vehicle Maintenance Monitor by a shorter name, the VMM. So let's get started with the theory of operation. The Vehicle Maintenance Monitor is a microcomputer-based module and has two functions. First, it monitors certain vehicle electrical systems. And second, it reminds the driver to either perform service on these systems or the distance traveled until scheduled maintenance should be performed. When the key is turned to the on position, the display will perform a prove-out routine. The display will flash on for a second, then go off and come back on, displaying a message. The message right now is monitor. This simply means that the VMM is monitoring the system. Let's see what happens when I open the driver's door. The message flashes door ajar, door ajar, then displays a continuous door, which is the abbreviated warning for a door being ajar. You can also see that there is additional information on the VMM. The outline of the Premier is letting us know which door is open by displaying a light on the left front door. This is the basic pattern for all of the VMM messages, with only a few exceptions which we'll point out. The display flashes twice, the chime sounds, a segment on the outline illuminates, and the abbreviated message is displayed. One exception is on the door ajar message we've just shown you. The VMM will only sound the chime if the vehicle were moving when the door was open. Now, there are 13 possible messages the monitor can display. You've already seen the door ajar message. The other 12 include the brake lamp out message, the tail lamp out message, coolant fluid low, and coolant sensor fault messages, washer fluid low, and washer sensor fault messages, oil low, and oil sensor fault messages on 1988 and 1989 models. A service transmission message only on vehicles equipped with an AR4 transmission. A perform service message every 7,500 miles or 12,000 kilometers. A miles or kilometers to service message only when prompted by the check switch, which we'll be covering in a few minutes. And finally, if none of the monitored system or service reminder messages we just covered have been found, the VMM will display the monitor message. Okay, now you know what messages our VMM can report to us. But how does it get the information? The VMM can only display what its input components tell it. The VMM monitors eight inputs located throughout the vehicle. These include the windshield washer level sensor, coolant fluid level sensor, oil level sensor on 1988 and 1989 models, the set of four passenger door latch switches, a set of four control switches, the transmission module on vehicles equipped with AR4 transmissions, the speed sensor module, and the lamp out module. The first two inputs are quite alike. The windshield washer level sensor and coolant level sensor are both read switches and are located in their respective fluid reservoirs. The VMM checks the washer level sensor every two minutes when the ignition switch is in the run position and checks the coolant level sensor every 30 seconds. When the VMM gets a low reading from either sensor, it will display the respective low fluid message. If the VMM detects an open in either of the circuits, it will display the respective sensor fault message. If the VMM is displaying a sensor fault message, you should run the diagnostics in manual mode to clear any intermittent faults from the VMM's memory. We'll be covering that a little later in the program. Okay? The third input is the oil level sensor. 
But again, this sensor is only found on 1988 and 1989 models mounted on the right-hand side of the engine. The VMM reads the input from the oil sensor 10 to 12 minutes after key off and will display a level or fault message if it gets three consecutive low oil or sensor readings. Now the fourth input is quite simple. A switch is located in the latch of each passenger door. When a door is ajar, the switch will complete the circuit to ground, alerting the VMM of the open door situation. Our fifth input is a set of four control switches. These are located below the vehicle maintenance monitor and include the English metric switch, the check switch, the list switch, and the reset switch. The English metric switch is used to alternate the VMM's display between English and metric units of measure. The check switch is used to scroll through any active monitored system and service reminder messages. After displaying any active messages, including the miles to service message, the VMM will return to whatever display was on prior to using the check switch. You can reset the distance to service, any intermittent faults, oil low, and oil sensor fault messages by holding down the reset switch until you hear a beep. Of course, you have to add the required oil or repair a fault before resetting the respective oil messages. But the reset switch will only reset the display that is showing on the VMM because you can only reset a display if it is currently active in the monitor mode. The list switch can be used to display all the monitored system and service reminder messages, whether or not the message is active at the time. Each message is displayed once and you can end this function at any time by pressing the list switch again. Our sixth input is found only on vehicles equipped with an AR4 automatic transmission. If the transmission should need service, the transmission control unit will close a switch to ground, alerting the VMM of the service requirement. The seventh input, the speed sensor module, is plugged into the back of the instrument panel cluster. The speed sensor module gets a constant signal from the speed sensor. The module processes the speed sensor information into pulses, delivering 10,000 pulses per mile traveled. The VMM then counts the pulses to determine the total distance traveled by the vehicle, so it can activate the perform service and miles to service messages. Okay, our last input is the lamp out module. If a tail or brake lamp is burned out and the lamps are in use, the lamp out module will detect a no current flow situation and will ground the appropriate VMM module input. The tail lamp out message will go off when the lights are turned off, and both lamp on messages will go off when the ignition is turned off. But if the bulb isn't replaced, the respective message will reappear when the brakes or lights are again in use. Also, it's important to know that the lamp out module does not monitor the center high mount stop lamp. If this lamp is burned out, the VMM won't display a lamp out message. Okay, that does it for the operation of the vehicle maintenance monitor. Now let's turn our attention to the trip computer and clock. Like the VMM, the trip computer is also a microcomputer and has eight basic functions. These are the time, stopwatch, distance, average speed, temperature, range, average economy, and instantaneous economy. To view these displays, you press either the trip time switch for the left four functions or the fuel temp switch for the four on the right. Also, an amber indicator lights next to the function, which is in use on the display. So let's turn the key to the on position and see how this system works. The trip computer will perform a prove-out routine, flashing its entire display on, then off, then stopping on whatever function was in use last. We see here that the trip computer was set on distance, so we'll press the trip time switch twice to get to the time function. To set the time, you first press the reset switch to enter the time setting mode. You'll notice that the display flashes while you are setting the time. 
And remember, the reset switch only resets what display is showing. To advance the hours digit, you press the trip time switch. And to set the minutes, you press the fuel temp switch. Set the program time by pressing the reset switch once more. This is important to know because the trip computer is constantly drawing from the battery. And disconnecting the battery will reset the trip computer's time function to 12 o'clock a.m. So you must be sure to return your customer's car with the correct time. To enter the stopwatch function, press the trip time switch. Then to start and stop the stopwatch, press the reset switch. If you want to restart the stopwatch from where you stopped, simply press reset again. But the stopwatch must be stopped to reset it to zero. So press reset to stop the stopwatch. Release it. Then hold the reset switch for at least two seconds. The third function of the trip computer is the distance display. To view the distance display, press the trip time switch again. The computer will display the distance traveled since the last reset in miles or kilometers, depending on the setting of the English metric display select switch. To reset the distance to zero, simply press reset. The average speed function works in the exact same way as the distance function. The computer will display the average speed since the last reset, either in miles or kilometers per hour. Okay, to get to our other four trip computer functions, we have to use the fuel temp switch. The trip computer will display whatever was used last, in this case, fuel range. So we first use the fuel temp switch to get to ambient temperature. The temperature function displays the outside temp in Fahrenheit or Celsius, depending on the setting of the English metric switch. The range display shows the distance the vehicle can travel until it is out of fuel, again in miles or kilometers. The trip computer calculates the fuel range by multiplying the amount of fuel remaining by the fuel economy value from the last 15 minutes of driving. This is a very helpful function on long trips. But don't be confused by what this tells you. It is not calculated from the average economy. It simply tells you how far you can go, assuming your running fuel economy remains the same. Therefore, it is normal for the range display to increase and decrease as changes occur in the running fuel economy. Also, it's important to note that the range display will rapidly decrease to zero when the fuel left in the tank approaches 1.7 gallons. Let's move on to the average economy. The average economy function will display the vehicle's average fuel economy in miles per gallon or liters per 100 kilometers since the last reset. And like several of the other functions, pressing reset will reset the display. Again, pressing the fuel temp switch will get us to our next function, instantaneous economy. This function displays the vehicle's current fuel economy, again in miles per gallon or liters per 100 kilometers, which is why our display shows zero. We aren't going anywhere. Okay, now you know what the trip computer can tell you, but where does it get all of its information? There are five inputs reporting to the trip computer, including the speed sensor module, fuel level sender unit, engine control unit, ambient temperature sensor, and a group of four control switches. The speed sensor module is mounted to the instrument cluster, and its information is used to compute distance traveled, average speed, range, average economy, and instantaneous economy. The fuel sender unit is mounted inside the fuel tank and supplies information used to compute the fuel range. The engine control unit is mounted to the bottom right-hand side of the plenum assembly and provides fuel consumption information used to compute fuel range, average fuel economy, and instantaneous fuel economy. The ambient temperature sensor is mounted near the driver's side of the radiator on the front lower cross member. This input is filtered and used to display the ambient temperature. As we've shown you, the four control switches are located on the front of the instrument cluster 
and include the trip time switch, the fuel temp switch, the reset switch, and the English metric switch. Now, the Premier and Monaco are also available with a clock in place of the trip computer and VMM, right where the trip computer would be. The clock is an electronic microprocessor with a built-in liquid crystal display and has three modes of operation, time, date, and its own self-test routine. When the clock is powered up, it will display date for six seconds. The clock doesn't run through a display prove-out like the VMM or trip computer. The control switches for the clock module include the hours month switch, which is used to set the hours when the clock is displaying the time, or the month when the clock is displaying the date. The minutes day switch is used to set the minutes when the clock is displaying the time, or the day of the week when the clock is displaying the date. And the date switch selects the date display for six seconds, then returns to the time display. Well, that does it for the VMM trip computer and clock theory of operation. We've already shown you how handy the vehicle maintenance monitor and trip computer can be, and we haven't even got to their built-in diagnostic features yet. The vehicle maintenance monitor, trip computer, and clock all have built-in diagnostic features to test their system circuits, components, and even themselves. Let's start off with the VMM. The VMM's diagnostics can be broken down into two modes, manual and automatic. But the modes have nothing to do with the type of transmission used in the vehicle. The modes simply mean that, in manual, the VMM stops after each test until it is prompted to go on. And in automatic mode, the VMM automatically proceeds through all the tests without prompting. In either case, the VMM can perform up to 17 self-tests on the system. But one important note, the oil level and sensor tests, if available, and the NVR and intermittent fault tests can only be performed in the manual diagnostic mode. Okay, to run the diagnostic tests in manual mode, we want to use the English metric switch to choose metric. So turn the ignition to the on position, select metric, and turn the key off. Then to enter the diagnostic function, press the check and list switches at the same time as you turn the key to the on position. The VMM will begin with a series of software revision codes. These first three codes identify the monitor's internal programming, and different codes may be found throughout the production year. Now, you don't need this information to perform the tests, so we'll go through them using the check switch. Now, the VMM is displaying RAM. RAM is the first of four tests the VMM performs on its own memory. While going through these, all you need to do is look for a passed or failed test. As you can see, the random access memory test is displaying a P, which means the memory passes and F would mean the test failed. We also see that the read-only memory test passed, as well as the time test, and the non-volatile RAM test. Now we're up to the parity test. The parity test checks out the second part of the VMM's memory. If the display reads par O, like you see here, the test has passed. But if a number is displayed after par, that means there are that many errors found in the memory. It's important to know that no matter how many errors there are, the vehicle maintenance monitor must be replaced. Okay, following the parity test is a display test. During the display test, all the display segments will flash once. The display will then cycle through all its numbers and will finish by lighting the seven segments of the vehicle outline. If there's any problem with the monitor's display, you'll be able to find out just what it is. Okay, on 1988 and 1989 models, the next tests are the oil sensor tests, which check the oil level and its sensor circuit. When you enter the test, the monitor will flash oil five times. During this, 
the list switch must be held down until it stops flashing. When the display stops flashing and the word oil remains lit, the test is initiated. After 30 seconds to a minute, the VMM will continue by displaying one of four messages. Possible displays include oil H and oil L, which mean the test has passed, and the oil level reads either high or low. Oil O means that the test cannot determine the oil level because of an open circuit, and oil S indicates a short in the circuit. To perform the oil sensor test, press the check switch again. If oil IF appears, that means that an intermittent fault has been detected by the monitor. After you've repaired the fault, press the reset switch to reset the display. But if no intermittent fault was found, the VMM will automatically skip to the next display. And again, the oil level sensor test is only possible while in the manual test mode. Now, our next test is the coolant fluid level test. This test checks the coolant level and the sensor circuit. You see here that we have a cool H message, meaning that the fluid level test passed with a high reading. And just as with the oil level test, H means a proper high reading, L means a low reading, O indicates an open circuit, and pressing the check switch again will test the sensor circuit and tell us if an intermittent fault has been found. And again, if an intermittent fault was found, clear the display by pressing the reset switch. The washer level test checks the fluid level and the sensor circuit and uses the same H, L, O, and IF codes as the coolant test. Now, there are two tests which check the signal from the lamp out module. The brake lamp out test will display BLO and either P for passed, as you see here, or F if the test failed. Now, a failed test signal doesn't necessarily mean that the lamp out module is faulty. All it tells you is that the VMM isn't getting the signal it was expecting. That could mean a short, faulty wiring, or another problem in the circuit. Okay, the next test is the transmission circuit test. The display will read either trans P or F. And again, a failed test doesn't necessarily mean the transmission module is faulty. The VMM just isn't getting the information it's looking for. The tail lamp out test is performed just like the brake lamp out test and displays F for fail and P for pass. And our last VMM diagnosis test is the road speed signal test. The VMM reads a signal from the speed sensor circuitry. The three-digit number corresponds to the frequency of speed sensor pulses generated by the vehicle speed sensor module. If no signal is being received or the vehicle is not moving, the VMM will display zero. To exit the VMM's diagnostics, either press the check and list switches or just turn off the ignition. Well, that does it for the built-in diagnostic features of the vehicle maintenance monitor. Remember, we went through the tests in the manual mode. The automatic mode has two major differences. First, each test is performed right after another in automatic mode without having to press the check switch. And second, the oil level and circuit tests, NVR or intermittent tests, cannot be performed in the automatic mode. So it's a good idea to use manual mode just so you can reset any faults. The trip computer's diagnostics are a little different than the VMM. Depending on which software version the trip computer has, you may or may not see a display test. But let's take a closer look. The built-in diagnostics on the trip computer can be broken into four self-tests. These tests check the internal circuitry of the computer and its inputs, including the control switches, the vehicle speed sensor module, the fuel sending unit, the fuel flow signal from the electronic control unit, and the ambient temperature sensor. To enter the self-tests, turn the ignition to off, and press and hold the trip time and reset switches. While holding down the trip time and reset switches, turn the key to the on position, and release the switches. 
the trip computer will automatically enter the first self-test. If the trip computer finds an error in its internal circuitry, the display will first read ERR, which is short for error. If this occurs, the trip computer must be replaced. If the trip computer does not find an error, it will display a software revision and fuel tank code. The first digit on the display is a software revision code that isn't needed to perform the tests. And again, because this trip computer has revision code 3, we'll go right from this display to our four diagnostic tests without performing a display test. The second digit is the tank size code as sensed by the computer. Like this one, all premieres should read code 4. The trip computer will stay on this display until one of the four circuit tests is initiated. If the English metric switch is set on English, pressing the trip time switch will initiate self-test 2 and pressing the fuel temp switch will start self-test 4. If the English metric switch is set on metric, pressing the trip time switch will initiate self-test 3 and the fuel temp switch will start self-test 5. Now, that may be a little confusing, so let's take a closer look. Pressing the trip time switch gets us into the ambient temperature sensor circuit test, which means that the English metric switch is set on English. We see that the display gives us a temperature reading, and the temp indicator is lit. If an open in the ambient temperature circuit was discovered, the display would read CO for circuit open. And if a short was discovered, the display would read CS for circuit short. Then pressing the fuel temp switch starts test 4. The fuel level signal circuit test and the range indicator is lit. If voltage is sensed in the circuit, the computer will display the fuel level in liters as you see here. And again, if an open or shorted circuit is detected, CO or CS will appear respectively. Now, to get to self-tests 3 and 5, you switch the English metric switch over to metric. Now, since we were in test 4, meaning that the fuel temp switch was pressed, the computer will execute test 5, the fuel flow signal circuit test. The trip computer will display the frequency of the fuel flow pulses and light the instant economy indicator. And again, CO will be displayed if the circuit is open. Our last test, self-test 3, checks the speed signal circuit. During this test, the average speed indicator will light and the display will read zero, since the vehicle is not moving. If the vehicle was moving, you would get the frequency of the speed pulses. Now to exit the self-test routine, you can do either of two things. The first is to press the reset switch. This will clear all fault codes from the trip computer memory. But if you don't want the fault codes cleared, you can simply turn off the ignition switch. Okay, that does it for the trip computer, but we still aren't finished with diagnostic features. The clock module also has its own built-in diagnostics. The clock module self-test routine checks its internal circuitry and the liquid crystal display and is very easy to perform. To enter the test, Turn the ignition switch to off. Press and hold the hours month switch and the date switch simultaneously. Turn the ignition back on and release the switches. The clock will continuously test its circuitry by displaying a number sequence. This sequence will continue indefinitely until the self-test is exited. If the clock detects an internal problem during this operation, it will display ER and a number. If a 1, 2, or 3 appears after ER, replace the clock module. But if ER4 is displayed, pull the fuse to remove battery power from the clock to cause a hard reset. Put the fuse back in and retest the clock. If this hasn't solved the problem, replace the clock. Then, to exit the test, just turn the key off. But you have to make sure you reset the time and date after the self-test has been completed. Well, there are the built-in diagnostics of the vehicle maintenance monitor, trip computer, and clock module. These components are not only convenient features for vehicle owners, they're also quite handy to technicians. 
But just how are these components used to diagnose a problem? Let's take a look at a couple of sample problems. As we explained earlier, the vehicle maintenance monitor gathers information from its inputs and displays its findings. But what if the information that's given to the VMM is wrong? Many repair orders are written up to replace a VMM that is functioning properly. Let's take a look at a couple of these problems. This customer's complaint is that the VMM is displaying a sensor fault. The first thing we need to do is find out which sensor is at fault. We can do this by checking with the VMM. Pressing the check switch shows us that the washer fluid sensor is the one responsible for the fault message. The sensor message means that the VMM isn't getting the information it's expecting due to an open somewhere in the windshield washer's electrical circuitry. So that means we have to perform a visual check to make sure all the connections and wires are okay. Performing a visual check through the system, we've discovered a bent terminal at the windshield washer. After the terminal has been repaired, go into the sensor test to see if an intermittent washer fault is stored. If so, press the reset switch to clear the fault from the VMM's memory. If the fault still exists after a few minutes of vehicle operation, the circuit should be checked again. But as we've shown here, just because the VMM is displaying a sensor fault, that doesn't mean you should replace the monitor. Okay, our next repair concerns a problem with the coolant level. This customer was pretty upset that their coolant level went low and the vehicle maintenance monitor didn't let them know. The logical assumption would be that our VMM is faulty, but that's not necessarily the problem. Let's take a look. Going through the manual mode again, let's see what the VMM has to say about the coolant level sensor test. Okay, the VMM says the coolant level is high, and we also know that the reservoir is very low. But again, the VMM can only display what its inputs are telling it. The fact that we got a high level message tells us that the VMM is getting a voltage reading from the coolant level sensor, so we know that there isn't an open circuit. Let's check out the sensor itself. A closer look at the sensor shows us that the sensor is reading a high coolant level. You can see here that electrolytic residue has accumulated around the sensor float and has caused it to become stuck in the high level position. Therefore, the sensor was always reading high and telling that to the VMM, so it turned out that the VMM wasn't at fault after all. This kind of repair is quite common, and many vehicle maintenance monitors are being replaced unnecessarily. Again, it's important that you remember that the VMM can report only what it's told by its monitored components. If what the VMM is telling you is wrong, it isn't always the monitor's fault. To service the vehicle maintenance monitor, trip computer, or clock, you must remove the instrument panel, bezel, and cluster. However, on the 1988 and 1989 models, you must first disconnect the shift indicator cable from the gear shift pulley lever. To do so, remove the three screws holding the instrument panel lower cover. Then, loosen the screw holding the shift indicator anchor bracket in place and remove the cable and bracket by sliding the bracket off the screw. Finish by removing the wire from the rear of the gear shift lever pulley. Again, this short procedure only applies to 1988 and 89 models, and the rest of the procedure is the same for all models. Remove the instrument panel bezel. The bezel is attached to the instrument panel with three screws located along the top of the bezel. Put a rag over the steering column so it doesn't get scratched, and remove the four instrument cluster screws holding the cluster to the dash. Then, tilt the cluster forward and disconnect the electrical connectors from the cluster. It's very important that you pull the connectors straight off. Wiggling the connectors back and forth to get them off may bend the terminals, making them useless. The VMM, trip computer, and clock are all located in this removable cluster. The vehicle maintenance monitor is located on the left side of the cluster next to the fuel gauge. Loosen the two attaching screws at the bottom and top of the VMM. Then disconnect the electrical connector and remove the module. To install the new module, just reverse the procedure as indicated in the Premier Service Manual. Okay, the service of the trip computer and the clock are identical. The trip computer or clock 
whichever the vehicle may have, is located on the right side of the cluster next to the tachometer. Remove the two screws at the bottom and top of the module. Disconnect the electrical connector and remove the module. Another common customer complaint is that their display is dim. The liquid crystal display is not as bright as other displays, but a particularly dim display could be the result of a burned out display lamp. Just pull the lamp out of its socket and replace it. Well, that does it for this month's release. We hope we've given you a good idea of what the Premier Vehicle Maintenance Monitor, Trip Computer, and Clock are all about. We've shown how handy the components are during normal vehicle operation. And we took you through the built-in diagnostic capabilities of the VMM, Trip Computer, and Clock. Then we went through a couple sample problems to show you how these components can help you diagnose customer complaints accurately. And finished up with the service of the components themselves. And again, all this is covered in the service manual, and the operation of the components is also in the owner's manual. Keep up the good work, and we'll see you next month on Videotech.